Welcome to Lesson 9D, Matching Pump to Pipe System. In this lesson, we'll review and demonstrate the pump performance curve. We'll compare system curve to supply curve and show how you obtain the operating point. We'll do an example problem of this. First, let's review the pump performance curve. In the previous lesson, we used a small axial fan. Now we'll use a small submersible water pump. I'll draw axes for V dot, the volume flow rate, and H, the pump head. In my demo, I have a small submersible pump. Flow enters through the inlet on the white plastic part and exits through the hose barb. We submerge it in the water. When we turn on the pump, the flow rate is at its maximum. This is what we call the free delivery, which is the maximum volume flow rate that the pump can deliver, and it occurs when there's zero head. Here's a typical pump performance curve. We attach a flexible tube to the hose barb at the outlet now there is a head loss, but the volume flow rate will be lower. We're operating somewhere here. As we raise the outlet of the hose, H continues to increase, because remember that H is H pump U, the useful head delivered by the pump through the pipe system. This H must overcome irreversible losses and elevation increases. As we continue to raise the outlet, we keep moving along this curve, Now the flow is just a trickle, in other words, a very small volume flow rate. If we go up a little higher, we've reached the shutoff head. I stand there holding the tube and nothing's coming out. The elevation difference between the water at the top of the tube and the surface of the water in the bucket is our shutoff head, which is H max. Now let's think about applying this pump to a piping system. A typical problem may look something like this. We have a pump pumping water or some other liquid between two reservoirs, and there's an elevation difference between them. We generate what we call a system curve by varying the volume flow rate from zero to some maximum flow rate. When volume flow rate is zero, the system curve is simply delta Z. In other words, our pump would have to supply this shutoff head. But we happen to have a heftier pump than that. As we increase volume flow rate, the system requires a larger head from the pump. The curve typically slopes up like this as V dot increases. At this point, we'd need a pump that can supply this much head at this flow rate. Again, we have a heftier pump than that. But as we keep going up in volume flow rate, eventually this curve crosses our pump performance curve. Our pump would not be able to deliver anything beyond this point where these curves cross. In fact, this point is the operating point. We typically label these curves the supply curve. This is the head supplied by the pump and the system curve, which is what the pipe system requires. You can also call this curve H required, and you can call the blue curve H available. Regardless of what you call it, the flow will adjust itself so that it operates at this operating point. V dot will adjust automatically to where the two curves intersect, which is the operating point. In a flow system like this, typically we do not know the volume flow rate. This is our unknown. To calculate the operating volume flow rate, we match system and supply curves, like I illustrated here. Again, these curves meet at only one point, and that will be our operating point at a certain V dot and at a certain head. I label this point the operating head, and this point the operating volume flow rate at the operating point. In real life, this is what will happen. The flow will automatically adjust to the operating point. When we're trying to predict this mathematically, however, for a flow such as this one, we have to generate equations for both the supply curve and the system curve, and then find out where they intersect, which will be the operating point. Let's do an example to illustrate this. We have water pumped from one large reservoir to another. I drew a wise control volume cutting through the surfaces of the two reservoirs and through the shaft of the pump. There are several minor losses, the inlet, three elbows, an outlet, a valve, and there are major losses through these pipes. All the data are given here, elevation difference, pipe diameter, the minor losses. Notice that since the jet from this outlet lies within our control volume, we count KL exit. Since this is turbulent flow, we use alpha equal 1.05. We look up KL for the elbows, 0.90 each, and there are three of them. We give the total length 
and the pipe roughness. This is cast iron pipe for which we can look up the pipe roughness. We know how to generate the system curve. It's the same thing we've been doing for many example problems, except we'll do it not at just one volume flow rate, but at several volume flow rates. We can create our system curve. What about the supply curve? Well, that has to come from the manufacturer's pump performance curve specifications. What I did was a curve fit for this pump and created this equation, H available, or H pump use supply, is H naught minus A V dot squared. And these are the coefficients I obtained from the curve fit. So this equation is the supply curve. We're asked to calculate the volume flow rate through this piping system. I already talked about our Y's control volume. And then we apply our workhorse head form of the energy equation, which is shown here. By Y's choice of control volume, P1 and P2 are both atmospheric. V1 is approximately zero at the surface of that reservoir, as is V2. There's no turbine in this problem. So we're left with H pump U, elevation difference, and the total irreversible head loss. Since we're doing an equation for the system, this H pump U is H pump U system, which we can also call H required. It's the required pump head for the given piping system. When we plot this head, it will be our system curve. So this equation reduces to H required equal HL total plus Z2 minus Z1. This is similar to what I showed in the demo. That submersible pump had to overcome irreversible losses through the tube, plus an elevation difference as I moved the outlet of the tube up. In this problem, we have only one diameter of pipe, so we can use our simpler equation for total head loss, namely V squared over 2G, FL over D, plus sigma KL, plus the elevation difference. V dot is our unknown, and V dot is speed times area, from which we get V squared, which we can plug into here. So we have an equation in terms of V dot rather than V. We get this, which we call our system curve. Z2 minus Z1 was given 8.00 meters, and we sum up our minor loss coefficients, the entrance, the valve, the three elbows, and the outlet. We get 14.25. We also know L and D are unknown as V dot. The only other thing we don't know is F. We need the Moody chart or the Churchill equation to get F, where F is a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over D. I'll use the Churchill equation, and as usual, Reynolds number is rho VD over mu. For a given volume flow rate, we can calculate V, just the square root of this. Then we can get Reynolds number. We know the roughness and the diameter, so we can get the Darcy friction factor at any V dot. The solution will involve some iteration, and the key is to match the supply curve to the system curve. In other words, set H available equal H required. H available comes from our pump performance curve, which we curve fitted, and we set that equal to H required from up here. And I realized I put a 2 instead of a 4 there. And then we write the rest of that system curve. This is really our answer in variables. But you can't just combine these terms and solve for V dot, because F depends on V dot. So you have to do some iteration to solve this, or put it into software that can solve this equation for you. The result is V dot is 10.7 liters per minute. This is our final answer, which is our operating point. I also checked the Reynolds number. It turns out to definitely be turbulent, and the Darcy friction factor is 0 0.0457. If you try this on your own, make sure you get these results, as well as this final answer. I also generated a plot showing the supply curve and the system curve. Here's the supply curve from the pump manufacturer. This is just our curve fit. And here's the system curve where I pick data points at various values of V dot in liters per minute and calculated H pump, or what we call H here. You can see that the two curves meet at 10.7 liters per minute. I used ease to generate this plot. You could also use Excel, MATLAB, or any other software you want. You should get the same result. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.